I'm Richard Seeger, the Palisades Geophysical Institute Le Mans Research Professor at the Le Mans Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University. I'm working on a number of problems related to drought in southwestern North America. So California has been going through a multi-year drought that this winter, winter 2016-17, it finally seems to be climbing out of. But before that, it was had about a five-year drought, and we've been trying to understand what it is that has been causing that drought and whether we should have been able to predict its beginning, its continuation and its end better than we did. One thing we're finding um, in relation to the drought in California is there does seem to be a connection um, to it from the tropical ocean. So in particular, warm sea surface temperature anomalies in the western tropical Pacific Ocean seem to have had an effect on the atmosphere that they're driving an atmospheric circulation response that placing high pressure over the west coast of North America that blocking um, the region from storms coming in from the Pacific Ocean and creating these drought conditions and that seems to have been throughout the drought a process that was going on in most of these winters and many of the months within the winters and what people need to understand is that the, the system we have there, the hydrological system, the climate system, and the ecological system is right now um, changing because of human-induced climate change, and it's becoming a different system to what we had back in in the 20th century or, or before. So there's a tremendous amount of variability going on that probably is, that is just all natural variability, but that's embedded within a system which is changing. So the implications of that are that in, across most of southwest and North America, it's getting drier, it's getting warmer, and that's going to be stressing water resource systems. So there's going to be less water available for um, use by people and use by agriculture, then that's going to have to be adjusted to. It's also meaning that the ecology of the region, the forests, are cha having to adapt to a climate that is also drier and warmer, um, and that's causing changes in the forest structure, is causing changes in um, the interactions between forests and insects and changing the landscape. That then will have some effect on the water in the streams as well and have some effect on the climate as well. So it becomes a coupled problem, but it's pushing over into a different kind of um, situation now. And it raises a lot of interesting and rather you know troublesome um, problems for humans and for society, including water resources, agriculture in the region, forest fires, because they're very dangerous to, to humans as well. We need to be able to understand physically what is going on so that we can work out how to adapt to this changing situation and manage it in a way to our own betterment, but also to enable us to better um, interact um, with the changing natural environment. So just because the drought is ending, however, does not mean that California will never have a drought like that again. The important thing is to remember is how se severe the drought was and how, you know, the negative co social consequences it had and be able to prepare for when droughts like that will occur in the future. And with the ongoing climate change happening as well, the chances are that when those droughts happen in the future, they'll probably be worse than they were um, in the past. So you're having to prepare for situations which are gradually getting worse. It's going to continue getting warmer. There's going to continue to be um, less snow um, in California in the winter, despite the year-to-year -year variations. That's the long-term trend. So when we have these wet years, it's important for the scientists and everyone to sort of remind the politicians and the general public that, you know, don't forget what it was before. Don't, you know, put your head back in the sand, but continue to look forward. I kind of ended up um, in the field of climate research almost by chance, actually. I mean, when I was an undergraduate, I knew I wanted to do something um, in terms of earth sciences and environmental sciences. And that was primarily because I really liked being outside. I liked studying um, the natural environment. I loved being in mountains. And so... Um, but I ended up kind of in climate climate research because of uh, an undergraduate professor I had back in England, and she was very she was herself an atmospheric scientist, and she sort of made the um, 
suggested to me when I was graduating that why don't you pursue a PhD in the United States? And because um, she had just come back from a sabbatical in the in the U.S. And for me, that was like an exciting possibility at the time. I was a well, I still am, you know, a huge jazz fan, and the idea that the U.S. government would pay me to study for a PhD in New York City at Columbia University with the enormous, you know, jazz environment that was there then, I wasn't going to say no to that.